football paddler. Thank you. David Dixon is David Dixon is walking around with a number 3473 on his chest. I guess that includes the number of American troops that have been killed since this war began. Included in that number is the son of Summer Lifford. Summer is with us this evening. She's a gold star mother. I want to ask her to stand, please. And would you like to say a few things? She has certainly earned that right. Well, first of all, I'm very glad to see all of you here. And there's nobody in this room that wants accountability more than I want accountability. Bush, Cheney, this regime murdered my 20-year-old son. I do want to see them pay. We do need them out. And we need to do it now. Reverend Yew, before you arrived, I gave a definition of what impeachment includes. Would you want to elaborate on how you see impeachment, the technical uh, words? I heard you. Oh, you did? Okay, so you were here. Excellent, excellent. I want to talk about that. But you referred to what we're going through now as the lunch counter moment. Yes. And of course, lunch counters, we go back to 1960 in Greensboro, North Carolina A&T, when those African-American college students sat in. Why do you choose that period? And, excuse me? Oh, Rock Hill. Well, okay, Rock Hill. Okay, well, yeah, Rock Hill. I want to leave Rock, Rock Hill. Why do you see that? Why do you see that moment as pivotal? And how it relates to nowadays. The reason that moment is, is pivotal is because that was a time, obviously, when we were able to see people coming together. And it was so good to hear about the NWCP and others and SNCC, but that was a time when people had come to a tipping point. There was a lot of, obviously, racism and things that were going on in the country. But at that point, everyone, particularly people of color, recognized that they wanted equality. And that's what I wanted to really discuss is because then ordinary students at the North Carolina a and People outside of leadership begin to begin to move in a way to create change. Now, the reason why it's important for us is that one of the things, and I actually, I, I will say, David is my very good friend, and um, obviously, David knows and Deborah knows that I am very close to Cindy Sheehan. Some of you might know we have him a very good bond, and if we go on, I'll talk about that later. And I had a very good. And I actually refused to do American TV in regards to Cindy. I only did the BBC. And I refused because that was one of her points. But the reason this is our lunch counter moment is because we as activists must stand up now. And history would then show that we are not complicit in what this president does. It is important to note that everything that Hitler did as Dr. King said, was legal. Everything Hitler did was legal. So I just wanted to just end with this, why this is included to impeachment. I want to challenge us tonight, and this is why, David, I think it's a little different. The Democratic Party, the Republican Party, the Green Party, in some cases, and other parties, that is not what we have to build now. We have to build a people's movement. It is not important to have, and I am also on the board of PDA, but it's not important to have a Democrat Congress or a Republican Congress. We must have a human Congress that must be to the And so one of the things there is that I want to spend time organizing. The lunch counter member works very well because we organize people. I just came around the country going around 15 cities in 30 days. And why this is important is because there are people who are here like you all around this country, and we must begin to rise up. Thank you. Thank you. I want to go to Lauren. Lauren, having been brought up in a conservative family, perhaps I missed exactly what brought about your leanings left of the center. Having, with, with your having been brought up in a conservative family, 
What is it that you experienced that caused you to go left of where your parents are? Okay, well like I said, um, whenever we'd ride to school, my dad would always have on, um, I don't know, talk radio. And I remember, um, I was probably about 13, and there was, um, the news report was that there was this new kind of birth control pill out that would allow women to skip periods. And, uh... Having been brought up in a conservative family, what is it that you experienced that caused you to go left of where your parents are? Okay, well like I said, um, whenever we'd ride to school, my dad would always have on, um, I don't know, talk radio. And I remember, um, I was probably about 13, and there was, um, the news report was that there was this new kind of birth control pill out that would allow women to skip periods. And, uh, being 13, my ears peaked. <laughs> I thought, how's that? And um, instantly, without saying anything about the health risks, this and that, the commentators um, started saying, oh yeah, those feminists, if men don't have to have a period, why should, we why should women? And they just went off about it. And I um, sort of, I just remember thinking like, wow, is that, is that what they think? Because you know, I, you grow up, you know, sitting on the couch, eight years old, you know, Bush versus Clinton, we were go Bush, because uh, my parents were saying that. But then, um, as you re as I reached a certain age, uh, you just started to realize that who the parents go for, who my parents or mostly dad was for, was terribly anti-woman. Um, as a dancer, I had a lot of friends that were gay, and they were terribly anti-gay. And um, I learned what basically it was the difference between a Christian and a Christian fascist. <laughs> Big difference there, and um, so that's sort of where it came from, and it sort of developed from there. I realized that it wasn't only just the issue of being anti-woman, of being anti-gay, but it was under an entirely different whole system of control and hatred. Thank you, thank you.